something to be uh, a positive thing. <laughs> and I think the time has come. Uh, you know, they always say make love, not war. So China and India has made a lot of love and a lot of babies. And now these babies are going to take over the world. So uh, I think India will take over in every field, inshallah. Shahrukh Khan, thanks very much for talking Thank you, to me, Tina. All the best. Would you like your children to be what? Actors, sportsmen, what? Sports people, yes. I'd love my son to be a soccer player if he can, if he wants to. He does taekwondo and he plays a bit of soccer. My daughter is very good. She's amazingly sporty. Mm. And uh, I first want them to be taller than me, both of them. <laughs> uh, second, I want them to be... Uh, I think they're really good at sports, both of them. They run fast, uh, they play hard, and they enjoy it. I like the fact that they are unkempt and ungroomed and dirty. They come back from school and you know that they've been rolling in the mud. Hmm. So I'm very proud of them for that. I think they're studying hard and making an effort. Whatever they want to be. Uh, I, I think the life, they have two problems. One, life has been easy for them and I'll make it even as easy as I can. So maybe they won't have the depth to be great actors. But I will um, hopefully launch them and make them big stars. <laughs> Second part is, I hope they never have to live under the shadow of their father's name. And in this field, maybe... I've created that shadow which might cover them. I don't know. Uh, I'm not saying I'm some big guy, but uh, I think they will have to uh, somehow find their own footings, be an individual on their own, and have an identity, whether it's in acting, whether it's in sports. My daughter acts quite well. It's a good mimic. My son is uh, devastatingly good looking. So, uh, you know, you either be talented or you be good looking and you can be a star, and, uh, or you can be like me, be neither, and still be a big star. <laughs> So I think I think whatever they wish to be, I'd, I'd be just happy that they're happy and doing something nice. I am. But Sharuk, you know, you are also an icon in many ways, very interestingly, because you are a symbol of secular India. I mean, you know, for what you are, the way you have been, the roles you play, in many ways you symbolize uh, secular India. And the interesting thing is that, you know, in my family, for instance, my mother, who's 65 year old, is a fan of yours. My niece, who's 22 year old, is a fan of yours. My husband, who's 44 year old, is a fan of yours. And I'm sure my 20 month old baby will be a fan of yours. I'm, I'm working on you. I'll make sure you're a fan of my daughter <laughs> because you conveniently forgot that. <laughs> no, I'm the interviewer. I have to be, you know. Uh, okay, we'll be at KKR to win, saying, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that, you know, that, isn't that a huge responsibility? Because you're cutting across age, you're cutting across communities. In a way, you kind of symbolize post liberalized India, don't you? Yes, it's a, now I find it a responsibility. Earlier, I just did uh, what my values told me to. So the choice of films I've done, if you notice them, somewhere down the line, there's some, some people may call them non-edgy, but I think it's, it's for the 65-year-old grandmom and mom. It's for that 20-month-old baby. It's for uh, the dad. I like my films to be universal, and I try to keep them like this. Sometimes the creative guy says, yes, do a dark, you know, do a baziga, do a don. So I do them. But I still try and keep them within some parameters of uh, what everybody can go and watch. Or even if they don't go when it's coming on television, it's not like, oh, that film is coming, switch it off, switch it off. It should not be like that. It can be, listen, guys, you don't see it. Like with my kids, I watch a film and I'm like, eyes closed, ears shut. So they go like that. It's open, <laughs> so they open. And the film is fine, you know. Sometimes mommy gets a little, you know, to tell them to keep quiet. I'm like, it's okay, as long as it's a basically decent uh, entertainment. So yes, you're right, a lot of responsibility. And I get worried about it, yeah. There are times when I want to just do a freewheeling film and say, okay, may, let me be edgy. But then you I... You would never do a Kill Bill kind of a film. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to kill to do a film like Kill Bill. <laughs> yeah, it is very violent. But I'd, I'd make it uh, artistically, I'll make it more lovable violent. <laughs> I think it's an outstanding film. The kids like it. Huh? Kids you like that film. Your kids have seen? Oh, yeah, yeah, they've seen. And I think, uh, you know, some of the things, the way they're done, Quentin Tarantino is outstanding. So some of the films, uh, you know, now they've started using uh, yeah, too much blood, hands cutting and all. You don't need to show. I think you can make it more artistic and uh, pretty or good looking or non-scary. I, I do. I, when I fight, I love fighting. I love action films. I love blood and shooting and killing. Uh, unfortunately, nobody thinks I'm tough enough to do that. <laughs> I built a six-pack, I did everything, but they're like, no, no, you come here and go to Jhe Dekha, so ye jana. Don't tell me you are like every other boy who loves Godfather. I mean, it's the beginning and end of all. So white, end. white vest, hair slicked back, dark glasses. <laughs> Pretty girls, yeah. 
Jirud, I won't say because people don't like me smoking, so I won't talk about it on TV. And before you say hello, I shoot you. That's my dream. And and I want to say, you're talking to me. I, I, I want to be an Italian. Yeah, I want to be an Italian mafia guy, mafiosi. I love it. I, what would I do? I mean, I would kill to be in films like this. And maybe I still have a chance. I think I'm 42, 43 now. In a couple of years, maybe I'll go completely mad. And if you were to pick one brand which you identify with, just one brand which you look up to, which you respect, which one would that be? Um, amongst the ones I do? That no, would be unfair. Otherwise, you know, uh, you don't even have to pick somebody, something that you do globally, locally, one brand. I think at this point of time, I'm, I'm, uh, Bollywood is a great brand. I think that's an outstanding brand. And I found out that we don't have the rights to it. Somebody's bought the patent and is that I don't know a trademark is doing trademark by some Americans I think. Sounds quarter. But yeah, sure. it just you trust Americans to do that. <laughs> but they have done it. So well, I think it's a great brand. I think it stands for kitsch, it stands for raw, it stands for emotion, it stands for uh, wrong coming right, it stands for great business, it stands for organization and disorganization, method and madness, and stands for a lot of fun and warmth. And in a certain way, I think you know whenever a country is doing well. Uh, the cultural or the entertainment aspect of it starts coming to fore. Soft power. Uh, yes, and I, you know, you hear about Korean films, but Korea is doing well. You hear about Japanese films, Japan's doing well. Of course, American films we've always heard of. Suddenly, you're not know, hearing of too many European films and, you know, English films. I'm not deriding anyone, but you know, it's done and over with. And I think uh, overall, when you go to America now or to or to the western part or the eastern part, all you're hearing is uh, India is being equated to uh, Bollywood. I'm sorry, I'm making a comment like this, but it's like. Brazil is known for Brazil nuts or, or coffee, <laughs> you know, suddenly India is like Bollywood. And I think that's outstanding. I mean, we should be known for bauxite and aluminum, but we are known for Bollywood. And I think uh, it's because of the country, uh, but the face of it, the soft, uh, the cover, the packaging, I think it's, uh, it's a great brand to be a part of. I'm, I'm really lucky that I'm, uh, there was a time I didn't like the term, but I'm sure there's a time a lot of people didn't like SRK either. So it's like that. Was that your? Was that? Was that your? Uh, idea? You know, I like to. I like to uh, write. Uh, you know, uh, what do you say? A uh, bye-bye at the end of it all, courtesy-wise. Right. Right. And you know, when SMSs came on, I hate SMSing. Uh, my fingers are too fat. And also, there were a lot of SK. Saroji was SK Saroj Khan. And you know, so I just said, no. My name is actually two separate names. Very few people know this. It's Shah, and then it's Rukh. And then it's Khan. So, so that's your name actually is actually, actually means a what you are. You are King Khan, and it, it means it, it means a prince-like face. Uh, I, I, I said humbly. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about Bollywood, someday, very soon, Bollywood would overtake Hollywood as a brand? You, you yes, as a brand. And I think well, we own about 3% or 1% or 2% of, of market share. But, uh, you know, when you talk about China and India, and but well, we have the eyeballs. I mean, uh, people say that I'm such a big star in the world, not because of Western uh, eyeballs. I'm a big star because of the Indian eyeballs. We have 1 billion people somewhere. Uh, making a lot of love and making a lot of babies is going to be uh, a positive thing <laughs> and I think the time has come uh, you know they always say make love not war so China and India has made a lot of love and a lot of babies and now these babies are going to take over the world so uh, I think India will take over in every field inshallah Shah Rukh Khan thanks very much for talking thank you to you Tina. all the best